Hi, let me introduce myself. I'm Stuart, Stuart Hawk, um, and I'm standing talking to you today from a small hill above Killy Cranky called Fon Vuick. Fon Vuick's a small hill, nothing of significance, uh, as is that hill over there to the north, Craig Allerke, just below the snow capped peaks. Fon Vuick here is about 12, 1300 feet above sea level. Um, and I'm a representative, a volunteer with the soldiers of Killycrankie, a small group of volunteers who live in and around Killycrankie below me, just north of Von Buick. Intermittently throughout 2021, taking turns, several of us from the soldiers are going to be um, doing short updates uh, like this one today, just to inform people who are interested in the area of central Scotland about different aspects of this area, in particular in and around Killycranky. Uh, obviously we are here to celebrate the battle of Killycranky which is fought which was fought in July 1689 and uh, every year apart from 2020 we tend to do a reenactment over that weekend on the battlefield itself. Uh, here today I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview about what I in particular will be telling you about throughout my little bits and pieces over the year. Like I say, there are three, four, maybe five or six of us that will do different things, looking at different topics. We all have different interests. My interests are mainly military history, battles, war. However, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to step back in time a little bit because at the moment, if you look behind me, you might even be able to hear in the distance. When you look down below us now, if you can hear the traffic noise, that's the A9. It's what we call the new A9, because running through the battlefield at the moment, we have the new A9, which was built in the late 70s, early 80s. We also have the old A9. Before that, we had General Wade's Roads. We have the River Garry, and we also have the train track, which came up in the 1860s. So at the moment, what can we see? Modern houses, farms, a few vehicles. We're in lockdown here in Scotland, of course. Um, not much else, because in reality, apart from the odd caravan park and hydroelectric uh, Clooney Dam, not a lot has changed here in central Scotland. And that's one of the most amazing things about living here. You can come to places like this. When I come to Fon Vuick, I look down uh, on the area around me, this is what I see. I feel like a time traveller, because when I look down below me, I know that a thousand, well, not even a thousand, seven hundred years ago, down below me, just after being defeated in battle at Methven near Perth, which is about 30 miles uh, east, Robert the Bruce came here. Robert the Bruce and the remnants of his army that had been surprised early one morning and almost annihilated. He then fled for his life. He just got himself crowned at Schoon Palace, King of Scotland. He goes on to be the greatest king Scotland's ever had. But that morning, he panicked like mad and managed to cross via a ferry just the River Garry down below us. I'll tell you more about that in the later periods. Um, and I'll show you exactly where Robert the Bruce crossed where he spent his first night on the run. We can travel further back than Robert the Bruce. This was uh, the central area mainly, the Picts, whoever the Picts were. It was heavily fought, um, populated by the Picts. They have left lots of stone circles and standing stones. Um, we don't know anything about these things, but they're all around us. 500 years ago, Mary Queen of Scots travelled here. Mary Queen of Scots to go to Blair Castle, which is a couple of miles to the northwest, just the other side of Fon Buick. Why was Mary Queen of Scots travelling here? I'll tell you all about that in another episode. After that, we obviously have the battle. The reason, or one of the many reasons why I'm interested in the Battle of Killycranky is, you might not think it, but I'm a Highlander. My ancestors were Highlanders, Duffs, Murrays, Scots, Halls. Some of my ancestors fought here in 1689, 
as part of the Athol Men. More to tell you about the Athol Men because some of them took part, most of them were in the hills securing their cattle. We'll talk about that sort of thing later on. Who else travelled through this tiny little stretch of glen with the, the River Gary? Well, if we go along to that hillside over there, these hills to the uh, just to the left of the sun setting are the Clooney's. Then it levels off down as it travels off east. And that ridge there, the treed forested ridge, are the Fanab Hills. Right at the edge of the Fanab Hill, only five mile away, there's a little inn, Logie Rate Inn, village of Logie Rate. Right next door to the Logie Rate Inn is a roofless structure. Everybody passes there time and time again, all year round. Hardly anybody realises that was a very important place. That was a court, a local court. Prisoners from battles were held there. Rob Roy McGregor was captured and put in there. Rob Roy McGregor. Luckily for him he escaped because not far from Logie Rate Jail there's a hangman's knoll. He'd have probably been hung there, but he didn't. He escaped. We'll go there at some point as well. What else have we got? We've mentioned General Wade. General Wade and uh, Caulfield, they came along and built roads and bridges throughout uh, central Scotland. Why? Because of things like Killy Cranky. The, uh, the hierarchy realised that there was always the chance that these clans that inhabited the highlands of Scotland could uh, revolt at any time and they could move easily because they, li they literally fought on foot. They might have a few people on horseback, uh, rugged highland ponies. But by and large, they were fast moving, lightly armed, lightly equipped. If uh, the, there was a revolt by the Highland chiefs and the clans, the governments had to realise they had to find a way of getting armies backwards and forwards to quell any uh, revolt as quick as possible. The government armies tended to have horses, carts, cannon, lots of troops. They needed roads, they needed bridges. So they came up in the 1720s and a big road building campaign started under General Wade. Bonnie Prince Charlie of course came here 1745 and 1746 backwards and forwards. We'll talk about him later. Everybody likes a little story about Bonnie Prince Charlie. Now without I must thank Francesca, my daughter, for being camera woman, TV <laughs> camera crew today. Thanks, Francesca. Um, it's okay. Don't turn around, but immediately behind the camera, opposite direction to me, is a lovely mountain. It's a few miles away, but it's called Chehalion. The Royal Astronomer Royal Neville Maskelyne made Chehalion quite a famous spot. Uh, that's a good hill to climb. Tell you a little bit about that along the way. Who else have we had in this tiny, quiet little glen? Alexander Duff, another ancestor of ours, ancestor, Alexander Duff of India. He was a famous missionary in the 19th century. Robbie Burns came here, Blair Castle, across to the House of Brewer. Well, not the House of Brewer, that wasn't there, of course. Brewer Falls. So Robbie Burns wrote about uh, Brewer Falls. That's a few miles away. J.M.W. Turner, the artist, he painted uh, many, many scenes in this area. The Wordsworths. Mr. and Mrs. Wordsworth, they travelled up here, they stopped in Aberfeldy, in Logie Raid, and in Pitlochry. Also Killy Cranky and Blair. Then we come to the 19th century with Queen Victoria. 1844 she came up here. Queen Victoria and Albert fell in love with Scotland because of Blair. Before they managed to... They travelled up here in the 1840s, stayed at Blair Castle, eventually travelled north and discovered the area around Braemar. The rest is history. We'll talk more about Queen Victoria. She had a big influence uh, in and around the Highlands. Who else was here? And I'll try and speed this up a bit because I don't want to go on too long because it's uh, zero degrees here today. Uh, Robert Louis Stevenson, one of my favourite authors. Robert Louis Stevenson lived in the area and wrote some of his books, his stories in and around Pitlochry and then across to Braemar. We also had the Black Watch and the Scottish Horse Regiments. Uh, they, they formed and trained in and around these glens, in between Rannoch, Dunkeld, Pitlochry. Sir Robert Watson Watt, the father of radar. Most people have never heard of him. 
just like nobody had heard of Alan Turing until the movie was made a few years ago, one day there'll be a movie made about Robert Watson Watt, the father of radar. Then we have Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth. When I was a wee boy, living across in Struan, travelling backwards and forwards to school at Pitlochry every day, we would quite often see uh, Her Majesty the Queen in a little Land Rover visiting family of hers. She had uh, relatives just below the Fanab Hills on an estate. A bit too old to pop across now, but she used to drive herself. So there we go. That's about all I want to say for today. Uh, I hope I've whet your appetite a little bit about some of the things I'm going to be talking to you about. But bear in mind the main thing I want to talk about is the battlefield. Uh, I'm going to adopt a police type head, because I did 25 years as a police officer uh, and I enjoy investigating things. So we're going to be investigating the battlefield of Killycranky. Not only the battlefield, what it was like to be a soldier on both sides, before the battle, during the battle and after the battle. Thanks for watching and uh, I look forward to meeting you all again.